co-creators, Lilou here. I'm in Glastonbury today with Juliette. Hello. Hello, Lilou. I'm so honored to meet you at last after all this time. Yes, yes. Juliette is like a wonderful fairy. Juliette has touched my heart and I know she will touch yours. I'm very moved by, by Glastonbury in general. This is a very much a, a beautiful place, a loving place that reminds me a little bit of the energy of Kauai. And it feels so good to be in places like this. It feels so good to meet people like you. It feels so good to meet the community here. And um, I want to thank you for your support on a juicy tour. You're hosting me in the Healing Waters, and I'm staying in the Gardenia Room. So if you ever come to Glastonbury, stay with Juliette. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful place. And just being here with you today, I feel is um, is just one another piece that I would love to put out into the world. And the right people will see this video. I know mm -hmm. you have a wonderful um, experience and life journey that is very rich in the real sense of it. <laughs> And you're a wonderful person. So let's let's start. I, I know that you have done a lot of the uh, tra trauma work. Could you tell us about that? Because you have yourself experienced trauma in many different forms. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, well, I, I suppose that we seek to heal what we've suffered from ourselves. And um, hmm. I came into this life with a very definite purpose but it took me a long time before I found the purpose because part of the experience of coming in was to experience what it was that I had to help people heal from so uh, I, I came in very traumatically and um, had a very very difficult and, and challenged childhood that um, involved um, a, a lot of um, experience of loss and abandonment and pain mm -hmm. and um, disruption of the normal bonds of, of um, that are so essential for us to feel healthy and whole so I I, I um, didn't have any really strong care in relationships with anyone as a child and it left me feeling very impoverished really mm -hmm. and um, and then I had a series of, I of experiences. I had two babies that died just after they were born. Um, and then I had three marriages. I had um, partnerships with, with people that were also suffering enormously. And uh, they were very painful and difficult marriages. Um, so there was this kind of, could we say this trauma or this thing that you were carrying and recreating constantly? Is that part of the trauma loop that you're seeing when you help people? Absolutely, we we continually recapitulate trauma, and um, I in uh, that we need to somehow resolve it. The psyche is bringing it up for us to resolve, and until we do, until we become conscious of it, then we keep reenacting it mm, in uh, different forms. So, somebody that has lost somebody else in their life must recreate that, so they find themselves again in this place of abandonment, of rejection, of separation, deep separation. That, that's right, because my earliest loss was actually in the womb, feeling like I couldn't, there was no connection there for me and, and total isolation in the womb. And um, my whole of life became that. I lost everyone that was close to me. Um, my brother who committed suicide, um, my grandmother who, who was my one carer that died from cancer in my early childhood. So it's taken me many years to feel okay and uh, an enormous amount of work to feel okay and um, I became a, a therapist and a healer and I focused on working with trauma so I specialize mm -hmm. now in trauma. Mm, it's very important on huh, this, this this I know you work a lot with trauma they're coming from the the, the, the birthplace. Uh, I spoke with Dr. Stanislas Groff over in uh, in California at his home. I went there and he was explaining how important it is. I know he was one of your teacher, and then you you learned from others. Could you explain that too, and what you learn and where it's at now? What, what what we're understanding about the birth and how important it is to come out gently and in a loving way. Okay. Uh, yes, Stanislav Groff was one of the teachers that informed my teacher, who was. Um, um, Franklin Sills, I trained as a cranial sacral therapist with him, first of all, at the Karuna Institute. And um, so I did a lot of birth work um, as a result of that training in, in dealing with the trauma of birth. But then I went on to study with Carlton Terry, uh -huh. 
who um, trained with Dr. William Emerson, and there we looked at the trauma around conception and preconception, the trauma of being a sperm, the trauma of being an egg, um, the trauma of conception itself and then implantation. Um, there are lots of different stages that are profoundly traumatic. So this means that w when I hear that, so so there's an understanding here that y that we are carrying something as early as the sperm in in our cells in our lives, right now. That's right. Yes, yes. Uh, we can be profoundly traumatized at the stage of our sperm journey when we are a sperm traveling to the egg. It's like a holocaust. It's an incredibly difficult transition. Very few people that are born. Um, Let me rephrase that. Of all the people that could be potentially born, there's only a small percentage that actually are because most people die, most beings die before they get to be born. So that's either at the um, preconception or conception or implantation. So it's the strongest. It's uh, w We go back to the, the, the survival of the strongest of the fetus, which is what we're trying to get away from now, right? We're trying to come back into this wholeness. Mm. Um, How do you describe that? Because it seems like earlier on, it's about this uh, winning this race <laughs> or yeah. being the strongest. Yeah. And now we're seeing that this is not bringing any happiness in this society, certainly not. Yes, I don't think it's something that you can compare. I don't think it's really about we get born because we're the strongest. I think it's because we have a very clear soul intention to be born. That's what this is what carries us through. Yeah. And when the when the soul is very strong and that, and has that intention, then they will come through enormous difficulties, as I did myself. Because when I researched, my biggest trauma was at the point of my soul coming into embodiment from, from the soul realms, if you like, um, into the egg. Uh -huh. That uh, I actually have more shock in my body around that experience than anything else, but I was very determined to come here. Uh -huh. And, uh, <laughs> and um, my, my um, biggest focus in life is, is co-creating, in, in um, working together with community, building on all levels, and that that is the strength our strength is in working together yeah. as as human beings working together with each other and with the with the environment and yeah. with the plants and the animals yeah. yeah so that's why you have those community gardens where you uh, now um, invite uh, beings that have might have received traumas too or how do you describe that you just you just have them help you help the garden being part of it and well th this latest garden here, um, Glastonbury Healing Gardens, and um, it's a cooperative that I've set up, but um, as a child when I was very isolated, I connected to the earth and nature, and that's what brought me through, and, and so I've always been a passionate gardener, and I've spent many years making gardens in different places, and um, what it did for me, it, it really helped my connection to myself through the connection with the earth, mm -hmm. and um, For me, spirituality is bringing heaven to earth, i.e. bringing um, bring in the, the spirit into the physical body, bringing the soul into the physical body through a well-nourished body that's well-grounded in the earth. And I'm very distressed, particularly these days, about what happens with our food sources, the, the incredible poisoning of our food by um, processed food and, and by chemicals in the environment and many many things and and um i want to teach people how to grow how to be reconnected to the earth and and to eat really really good food mm -hmm. and um to be whole and in that process they reestablish their connection with the earth mm -hmm. with each other and and work in community so the glastonbury um the, the cooperative here is building community with different people um Some are a long way away. Some are in London. They come down and participate in the gardens, mm. but also local community. So we we grow produce for people in Glastonbury that can buy, and um, people can join the cooperative and they come and work in the gardens and have produce in return. Or if they're disabled and they can't actually do physical work, they can interact in other ways. But it's about working together and being connected and having a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what we, just being in the garden and being in contact with the earth and seeing it, uh, seeing those plants grow, mm. how much then we reconnect to the bigger picture, what we have, most of us, uh, forgotten. 
Absolutely. And it's it's a remembering. I think remembering is re-putting back together, reconnecting the members or the parts of our body. And um, we have become disconnected and, and we are now remembering and, and recreating ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have this um, this beautiful story, this beautiful place, House of France, that is dear to your heart, that you have been able um, to re-manifest in your life, right? Tell us about that story, because I think it's super inspiring. Um, it's a bit emotional, I know. Yeah, it, it's... Well, I... Um, I moved to France. I've been in Glastonbury for 27 years, but then I um, met my which is now ex-partner in America on a vision quest. And um, I brought him to France and he wanted to visit and he wanted to move there. So we ended up moving to France. And we had an amazing property and I lived there for eight years and taught people how to grow and, and make cheese. We kept goats and many, many things, how to make um, jams and so on. But it was a very, very difficult and challenging time and um, we ended up, our relationship broke up and I came back here with the children back to Glastonbury and um, was heartbroken because I loved, I felt such a strong connection with this place because I'd done a lot of energy work there and and there had been a terrible massacre there by um, the Nazis and the, the man who owned the house previously to us had been killed in the massacre and... A lot of energy work and a lot of a lot of clearing and beautiful things created there. We renovated the house. Well, I was really, really sad to come back to Glastonbury, but I was told if I didn't come back, I would probably die because I was I'd got so ill with the challenge of the work there. And uh, I came back and and then I set up um, healing waters and and um, some other things and and started rebuilding here. But I was all the time I kept uh, my part share in the house in France. But um, terrible things happened. There were two fires over two years. The beautiful barn was burnt down. Beautiful, like a listed building, barn, totally destroyed. And then the end of the house that I just renovated was also destroyed in another fire. And I just didn't know how I could possibly ever get the money to pay off my ex-husband so that I could rebuild the place and I couldn't let it go either I just felt such a strong bond with it and um, and then last summer I was also being threatened with eviction from this house um, unless I could buy it which I couldn't do either and it's essential for the project to have this house here because for the development of the gardens and I was so stressed by everything that I got an infection that um, um my immune system was really low. I had, a t- had to have a tooth out and the infection from my tooth went to my heart and I was rushed to hospital um, as an emergency and they said that I would have died if I hadn't been rushed to hospital at that point. But mm-hmm. the infection damaged my heart and they said I needed heart surgery, which um, I've never been into hospital apart from the birth of my children and I'm very pro um um, herbs and homeopathy and I'm not very keen on allopathic drugs or surgery or anything so uh, when I recovered my strength I said I didn't want to have the heart surgery because it felt really awful the thought of such a thing to me and that I would somehow heal myself I'd come back and I was open to a miracle happening anyway as a part of that process that um a woman came to me and said that she would put in the money. Two people came to me. They'd put in the money to buy this house so I could stay here, so I had security to carry on developing the gardens. Mm. And um, and then this um, thing happened in France where my ex-partner um, gave me one week via a bailiff to... Um, either pay him all the money for the house or else it was going to be seized and auctioned off and my bank account would be seized and everything. So it was like terrible. It's a lot. It was that this was only about three weeks ago and it was utterly terrifying the whole thing mm. that I was about to lose this place. And um just out of the blue, um well I really put out a prayer and, and something happened which allowed me then to give him the money. And um, the money it was incredible because the money for this house here and the money for the, the, the French house went through the banking system. 
um, on the same day, and I'd been 10 years trying to sort out the French house and five years trying to sort this house out, and th the money went through on the same day for both houses, on the equinox, on the new moon, mm -hmm. on a special conjunction that was happening. Yeah. And I could never have predicted that would have happened. And uh, all, these, all this time I'd had a little scrap of paper that a child had written, a message of hope, magic will happen, mm -hmm. by my bedside table. <laughs> All this time, and I've just been praying and praying because I want to create a beautiful project in France. I want to re reclaim and, and do beautiful, you know, a beautiful place, a retreat for people to really reconnect and, and to heal. Yeah. The same as what's happening here. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to, and this is in Tarn, no? That's right. It's in Tarn. It's in a beautiful, unspot river valley, the Vior Valley. In the, in the south of France, it's absolutely stunning. It's mm. so alive and, and so full of nature and, and nature spirits. And it's, it's so can we make a call to people wanting to, to maybe help and support your project down there to, to come and visit? I guess you'll be looking for a lot of people to support yeah, this. Absolutely, I would love that to happen. Anyone who, who's inspired that would... <laughs> Please, if you feel moved from the heart, because it's really important that it's heart-centered. If you move from the heart to, to come and help with that, I would be so, so honored to meet you and, and to have that happen and to see those walls go back up and the roof to go back on. <laughs> oh my God, I can't imagine. When is that starting? When are um, you going there? I'm going down in June to, to start the work. And June 2012. That's this right. video might be staying for quite some time. Oh <laughs> yes, yes, well there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do and I, I have got incredible visions for it and uh, of co-creating co heaven on earth yeah. in the south of France as well as here in Glastonbury, yes. Beautiful and I know they'll find your contact through the site and under the description of, in this, description of this video so it will be easy. It's easy when it's meant to it be, isn't is it? Absolutely. It's well, uh, not with from what I'm hearing from from because you you really I mean there is a certain ease and and everything just effortlessly opened up when it was supposed to, I mm -hmm. guess. So that's part of the ease, but it seems like there's a lot of struggle and there has been struggle in your life and that's why it's an inspiring story because you have transcended that and you keep on transcending it and you keep on being an example for mm -hmm. for what's possible and how we can reinterpret and recreate our life in a beautiful way you, you had an operation mm -hmm. a few weeks ago no i didn't have the operation well i refused you didn't, but you were you the operation yeah, yeah. But you were in uh, infected i i was very seriously ill yeah. very seriously ill and i was warned by the surgeon not to think that i was well just because i looked well because mm -hmm. i was very seriously ill mm -hmm. and having never been ill before that was a huge shock for me but um the struggle is, is like one of the major patterns that I'm trying to work into shift in my life because that's an example of the recapitulation. So struggle was how it was for me um, in my birth. I had a very difficult birth and I kept re I have been rerunning this pattern and I'm really seeking to change it. So it's keeping my consciousness on that edge that I know things, magic will happen. It will come really, really easily. Um, and to keep the mind clear and holding as it is now, it is done. It is done. You know, hold in that consciousness and not to go into the struggle. To be aware of the struggle, okay, this is my pattern. Mm. And this is the story, but I don't need to be stuck in the story. That's what we're discussing uh, this morning. And that's really when I'm working with trauma with people to bring them back into the present moment that you do not need to exist in trauma time. Yes. You don't have to rerun this, you are safe. And to heal trauma, it's to create a sense of safety and well-being mm. in the body, that you are anchored in your body, and your body is well in this moment, completely safe. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm so moved and uh, honored to have met you and that we had this chance to do this video. Thank you so much. Lilu, I, I can't even begin to tell you how touched I am that you've, that you've come here. <laughs> Is, it is a heart-to-heart -heart connection. It is your it is your heart that's been calling, and that we we have connected, and I'm and I'm super moved to and and um, and uh, emotional just being in this mm. place and meeting you right away. Just in Glastonbury too, it's been really surprisingly heart opening and just very vulnerable place. Thank you for showing your vulnerability and your heart mm. all the way. 
thank you too. Thank you so much, Lulu. And uh, thank you, thank you to everyone that chooses to actually s take the risk to uh, be themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is a risk, and it is wonderful, and it is part of the juicy living, living in a juicy way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> much, much love from Glastonbury. And um, yeah, love to me. From me to you, to all you wonderful people out there. And um, no matter how you think of yourselves at the moment, know that you two are truly great. And um, sending you so much love here from Glastonbury and from my heart. <laughs> much, much love. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>